Okay, colleagues, so we learned that we may have not enough brain to understand the brain. We understood that dropout can also be positive, that it's not necessarily a bad ending. So we have four dropouts there, okay? <laughs> the door opens and another door, it's okay, it's okay. <laughs> but this was not the meaning of him telling dropout is a chance. It's my pleasure to introduce our coach, Ajahn Ekawit Sawangpol, who is the national coach from Thailand. Please give him a welcome. Sawadikap, Ajahn. When, when I looked at his credentials, it was three pages. So I just told myself, I will not mention all the SEA Games, medals and records. I just focus on the gold and highest level. So he has been the coach in long jump and triple jump for medals in World Championships youth. He has been repeatedly winning gold medals in the 4x1, 200, 202, 207. I have to mention that yesterday the Germans won it, I think, the woman. Yeah, I have to mention that. We not win so many times, so I have to mention that. And he did the same in Asian senior and Asian junior. So, when we look at this, I have the privilege to know him. I would describe him very simple. He is unique in the sense, sprints, jumps, throws, being a former uh, decathlete, combined events, he can coach everything successful on elite level, all but middle long distance. So I'm happy I'm safe. Yeah? So that's one of the reasons why we invited him, because he has a vast experience in most event groups and also in the related situation of dropout. Ajahn Ekavit, the floor Hello, is yours. Hello. Okay. Good morning. Good morning, coaches. Firstly, I uh, would like to thank you for IWF Development Department to invite me to be here. Normally, I'm, I'm with the team in Poland, in Spala, for the training camps. And Gunther asked me to be here to talk and share an idea with you about how to reduce dropout in athletics. I do believe that uh, only one coaches in the country cannot reduce dropout in athletic. But I think we have to share an idea today to all the coaches in our country and share the knowledge how to reduce the dropout in athletic. We, con we concern a lot about the dropout in athletic of the athlete, but sorry to say, nobody care about dropout of the coaches. <laughs> Yeah, we are, we are working so long in athletic, like you and I, I work in athletic for 25 years in the national coach, so start boring. I like to do some other, other sport, when, then we can lose our coaches to other sport too, not only the athlete. Friend of mine now who is the former uh, athletic coaches, now he works with the volleyball team, and very successful our volleyball women is num number one ranking number 12. So they are very good. And then we lost one good coach to other sport. But come to our topic today. Training young athletes is a long-term development, as you know. I think everybody know my content today. No need to, normally no need to mention. But just to remind and maybe have some discussion to discuss with us uh, for the long-term development to reduce the dropouts in athletic, what to do and how to do and how much we can do and when we have to do. Oh, sorry. This is nice girl, yeah? This team is uh, my uh, relay teams. This team won three times Asia champions. One silver in the Asian game competition. 
one gold medal in the Asian Games Competition in 2010. And I trained this team since they are 16. And they finished athletic career when they are 30 to 34. It means they are training in the elite training for almost more than 10 years. More than 10 years. This is my outline today. I have a six issue to discuss with you today. First one is to be fun, to be a fast learner. The, the, the younger age, the kid like fun. Like a professor mentioned us this morning in his presentation, they have to play, they like to play. But maybe in, I don't know in your country, but in my country, the young athlete must sit in the class and study for the whole day. And the family bring them to the class again in the evening for the extra education. So the, our kid is lack of movement. So in our, in our training, at the younger age, we must create fun activity for the, for the kid as a fundamental movement. Not only run, jump, throw. They have to do run, jump, throw, roll, turn, kick, his hang. Yep. They have to do a lot of movement in the younger age. Second, enjoy to perform a technical model. After you, you perform fun and fun, a lot of fundamental of the movement, then we come to our sport as a rough model of jumping, throwing, running, even uh, very boring uh, uh, marathon running. Only right leg pass, and right leg pass to the left, right, left leg, and left leg pass to the right leg. It's 42, more than 42, huh? 42 kilometers. It's boring, no? Because that's why our, we, we lost our athlete to other sport. So we might create fun activity for the young, for the young people. Then come to our area. This, this is the area of risky to lose the at least in, in the athletic training. Training load. If we not apply size in the training, it's very dangerous. We can maybe we do a lot of kind of training, too much intensive training, and then our athlete get injury, long-term injury, and then they can drop out from athletic very easily. This one is also very important. This is a strength training. For me, strength training is also very important for the performance of the athletes. But on another hand, it risks for the injury also if you don't do it properly. This one, mind development. The athlete needs strong mind in the training and in competitions, not only not only uh, just training and competition, lack of my strength, maybe they can lose the competition very easily. Continue professional development of coaches. This is the key area you cannot do, but your association can do to improve the knowledge of the coach or the coaches all around country. And then when you have a good coach, you can reduce drop out in athletic. This is a thing you, if you ask uh, in CECS, level one coaches course of uh, IWDF, they show that this is state of development of the athletes starting from their kid to, to the five stages, the, performa the, the perf performance area. How long? It's very long. It's more than 10 year development. So no need to hurry. Be cool. Complete each state. And then you get a very good athlete to go further. If you so rush, and then you not complete the first state, and then if you build the building and the foundation not strong enough, you cannot build the building as high.
This is the idea of one of my teachers from Heidelberg University, uh, Walter Amaya. He gives this pattern for the sport training development. It's easy to memory because it's just a very simple word, FBP. FBP. F is mean a foundation. B is mean build up. And then a performance at least. Maybe you can separate here F1 and F2. And then here B1 and B2. And then here P1 and P2. And then, then you, can, you can complete every state of uh, training development. And then at the end, we can get a good performance athlete. Just to remind you this general movement before specific movement. General first, specific later. A lot of general movement, they can learn specific movement better. As the professor mentions in his uh, presentation this morning. Here too, general fitness before specific fitness. It a lot of injury from too early specific fitness. Shoulder of the javelin throws, low back of the shot putter. Yes, and hamstring of the sprinters. It's a lot of cares, and all of this is leads to drop out in athletic. This is Professor already proof. I am right. I don't know his presentation before, but I write this model in, in my PowerPoint. Because the sports performance is the brain, sensory motor, or the body, or the muscle, neural muscular nervous system, and my coordination. Then, mostly, we start training the athlete with the sensory motor, but we don't take care about the brain. Then, we can do something to increase the brain uh, performance. After that, we do sensory models, and we do together uh, coordination with the mind, and then we can get the effective training for the athlete. It's a lot, lot of activity we can do, not only in athletic, that's why we have to ask our young kid to do other sport, to do swimming, like you, to do football. Now football is tonight, yeah? Final. Congratulations for France. No, 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 no. Croatia. Yes. Croatia. I don't know who will win tonight. Croatia. Yes, maybe you can come at the end after uh, 70 minutes. Last 20 minutes, Croatia will be very good. Africa. Africa. <laughs> okay, okay. That's fun, but I cannot see the uh, World Cup tonight because I have to fly back to Bangkok and I have to go immediately after the, the presentation. Yeah, very sad. Yep. Okay, and this is a basic foundation of skill performance. I think you know a foundation of skill performance is the physical literacy. How fast and how smart our kid can learn skill. And this is the brain performance, it's not only the body. It's you can, how to, you link the brain to the body. How you link the brain to the motor skill. We can, if we go, uh, this, I list the, the term of the uh, efficiency, uh, officials and effective athlete, how to, how to improve the young athlete. Then we start with the focus and self-awareness. If they lack of focus, they cannot perceive. The perception is not good when, when we are not focused on the thing we do. And perception ability, reaction, 
anticipation and sense of space. Mr. Fung, can you come with me? I'd like to show you this is football. So you can see the World Cup tonight. Then we can do some reaction activity. You touch my hand, I drop the ball, and then you try to catch the ball, okay? Okay. Once more. Did you sleep enough to last night? <laughs> <laughs> One more. Yes, good. Yes, good. If your kid can do one ball, and then we do two ball. Now he has to share not only one awareness, now he has two awareness. Okay. And also, we can do another thing. We can do the anticipation and sense of space. Like he throw the ball to me, and I throw the ball up there, and then I receive his ball and throw back to him, and I receive this ball. You throw the ball. One more. Who won't try? <laughs> can it's fun. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> don't worry, don't worry. Thank you. This is, this is brain analysis, brain activity or, or brain performance to analyze the, the movement or the situation of the movement and then they make a decision what to do. After that, responsiveness. See, only, only one uh, movement activity, you can gain a lot of things and increase the performance of the brain of a young athlete before we do specialization training. Coordination and synchronization, rhythmic timing, orientation, cyclic and uncyclic movement, running and take off, running and, and clear the hurdles. This is a cyclic and uncyclic, uncyclic movement. Muscle chain, muscle sling, balance, stability. This all do we need in our sport training and the sport performance. But we always take care about the technical model. But we never, sometimes we don't do this. And we don't think, and then we think, oh, our, our athletes is smart enough. But normally, the smart is start from here, focus, self-awareness, perception, ability, and, and how to lead them to a faster learner. Kinesthetic feedback. It's also very important. How we train kinesthetic feedback? Yeah, like, like this ball, I throw this ball behind, I don't see it, and I can catch it. This is a kinesthetic feedback. We can train very simple. We can train it very simple way by using a very, a very uh, simple equipment. What? Oh, Gunther played, Gunther will play this. This is how to find a good timing to throw something in the air. You cannot? Okay. Yes. This is, this is, you can train your commas and if you throw the medicine ball. Because in the air, you cannot use your leg and your calf and your hip, but you can use your core to do this. And after that, after you, you perform the younger athletes, then we can start to perform technical model training. This is in our fields. And this guy is the World Youth Champion in 2009. In 2009. Yes, this is the area of us. Uh, conditioning and technical perform technical uh, conditioning, psycholo psychological conditioning, physical conditioning, and what we want to have from this conditioning, we need adapt bad adaptation and be careful about the intensity, volume, and recovery of training. And we have to think about what kind of load you do to your athlete: neuro, energy, muscular structure, or mental load. This is, as you know, this is the multi-phase of the 
the development for the young athletes, skill phase, speed phase, strength phase, for the boy and for the girls. This is long-term athlete development. As you know, if we so hurry, and may, may our athletes stop very early. And then we do late, de late developments, and then maybe our athletes stop later. And then they, do, then they train with us for a longer time, and maybe they can get more successful in the athletic career. This is how to do the strength training. This is, they get this boy from tennis training. You see his left shoulder, shorter than the right shoulder, is about five, five centimeters. This is very dangerous, and this is the create from the training. And sorry to say, it's create, create this kind of, of risky injury from the coach. And when we talk about the strength training, we have to look at the plane of training. Right side and left side are equal. Front muscle and back muscle are uh, balanced. Upper body and lower body are balanced. But are good balanced enough. And how to do strength training correctly? I myself like to say strength training is also technical training. It's not only go to the weightlifting room and start lifting weight. But we have to care about the technical of each exercise, each strength training carefully. If not, it leads to long-term injury for the athlete, especially the young athletes. Muscular contraction, isometric, isotonic, con uh, eccentric, concentric contraction, plane, axis of, of movement, the fun cramp of the movement, angle of choice or range of motion, what, what is the angle of the choice you want to train at the, at the level of the choice? You want to go deep or you want to go not deep? Direction of force and re direction of the resistance. And do not forget to train strength at the tendon. Mostly the, the athletes also gain injury at tendon not only at the muscle or the bone. Pre-tension. Uh, this is a technically, especially when you do plyometric. The muscular must have a good pre-tension before we touch to the ground. Foot and hand placement, grip, and so on. And this is a thing you know very well. And this is the mind development. We need a strong mind athlete. This team who win the the Asian Games in 2010. They disqualified in the Asian Games 2006. Before they ran, ran in the Asian Games 2006, they are already three times AKS champion. But they do the disqualify because of the button chains out of the zone. All cry, and then after they stop crying, uh, we talk to them. We have to wait for the next four years. And then in 2010, we are co medal in China, in Guangzhou, yes, in Guangzhou. That is, I worked with this team for more than 10 years. Then we have to set them attitude, A, B, C, D. It's very simple, A, B, C, D. Attitudes, behavior, commitment, and determination. And don't forget to do a clear goal setting with your athlete. This is coaches' education. I'm the chairman of coaches' education in my association. And right now, this is a, uh, statistics. We have 1,000 kid athletic instructors, 748 level one coaches, 45 level two coaches, and four academic coaches. Thank you for the long-term project from a German expert. We do this since they start working, and we start before in 1993. Then, when I do believe that I'm a coach, I can coach not so many athletes. I can coach for maybe four or five athletes, but I cannot coach the athletes for the whole country. So the the education system is the key how to prevent and avoid dropout in athletics. Last but not least, 
you are the coach. You have to do this. It's very simple work, but very complex to do. Do what your athlete need to do, but you have to do it correctly. Thank you very much for the morning. Not, not morning, this is afternoon already. Sorry. So can I invite Wille and Arjun Ekavit to take a seat and you are now able to fire back, please. First question. Yep. Are we on? Yeah. Hi, John. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation earlier, Vila. Um, just one quick question about athlete dropout. So how much do you think it's down to a selection process from the coaches due to the athlete not being good enough at a later age when there's more athletes at a younger age? So how much do you think it's not to do with the athlete dropping out because they don't feel competent, but how much is it because they're actually not competent enough to uh, compete at an elite level? And then maybe a follow-on question for the coach would be kind of, is this something that you um, sort of implement as well, where you choose an athlete based on their ability and then forget about the athletes that are dropping out? Yeah. I think, <clears throat> I think many times the uh, younger athletes, they don't, they don't actually they don't think about their process as a long-term process. They see many times it only a one-year process and, and their world, world crumbles if they can do results in one year and that can lead to dropouts very easily. So I think coaches should emphasize that the actual process, it's a very long one and, uh, and, and <clears throat> that don't focus only on one-year competitions. Hello, my, quest, my answer is we can select a good athlete by the talent identification and the best way right now for me is to do KA or kid athletic. In each event, in the kid athletic competition, you can find the talent. I get one uh, young athlete and last three months she is uh, number two world ranking, and the 14 pole voting, and she performed 360. And this athlete is a very fast learner because she trained kid athletic before she come to the association. Then the athletes can improve, and then the, the motivation is up, and then they can train for longer times. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we heard that there is very important the motivation for athletes, but we have to understand some countries don't have enough support, and that's when coaches have to do a double, double job. For instance, there are countries that have poor, poor support from their federations. Sometimes we have countries over here, they show up all with one athlete, and they cannot compete in the same way that other countries do. Sometimes there are federations do not give support of the visa, passport, tickets, lodging, and they have to come over here with, without motivation. I know it's not on your hands, but at least you, under your experience, can say how can you help in this case to keep motivation of your athlete when we have problems that are in not our hands. <laughs> you want? Do you want to do first? I think uh, nowadays, uh, when we are talking about global environments, that I think that uh, if you have some some kind of funds, you are able to have uh, close relationships with different coaches from different countries, and I think you should. Uh, and do that definitely with your athletes if you're 
if we are considering like smaller federations now that's my point of view in my point is give a scholarship to your athlete if you have enough uh, money I do this and do believe me I have two brawn Olympic games in my house she is my former athlete sprinters and she won the bronze in 18 and after that one bronze in Beijing in weightlifting she changed from athletic to uh, weightlifting and she stayed in my house for four years. Uh, I do believe that some country like uh, Ethiopia, they are not rich country, but they still work a lot of world class athletes. Yep. Start from start from ourselves, and then you can share for everybody. Yes, thank you. What do you think, how important uh, is it to make the younger kids compete against each other and awarding them with medals, knowing that uh, their genetics are completely different, especially in the 10 to 12 year of age? What do you think about that? Okay, this, this question, IWF Development Department, already answers. That's why they create kid athletic. And kid athletic have no balance and have no single winning. It's a team sport. It can help the athletes for more society learning, smart kid, and can work together with the team. It's better than one single champion. Do kid athletic. Uh, I think uh, if you consider children's coaching that uh, alone the competitions does not uh, force children to quit that even if they do competitions at early age and uh, scientific evidence also backs it up that it's uh, probably the the lack of this mastery climate that's the reason for dropping out and I think the most important thing is how the coaches teach the younger athletes uh, and develop their attitude towards competition. If the, if the coaching environment all the time is about points and medals, and that's the, then, then the pressure is wrong. But if you emphasize that you should focus on yourself and your own development, then the, like the medals and that kind of stuff then can be nice extra for the stuff. Uh, I don't, I don't want to make competition like a big bad thing that's destroying all the children. The competition can be good also in a right way done. Thank you. Um, I guess a question I have is around um, early specialization versus early specificity. Because I think, you know, back home we've got throwers, they are throwers, we know that they're going to be throwers. We're not going to get them running a steeplechase. You know, so I think it's important that we have run, jump, throw, but it's looking at developing the all-round athlete. I think we can have early specialization, providing that we don't have early specificity. So we have a multi-event background, but everyone is doing javelin, shot put, hurdles. It's still early specificity. So just what are your views on, on that? Um, like I said, uh, or at least tried to say in my presentation that I think that uh, the main principle with the athletes should be also the, that what the athletes want to do. That I don't see anything wrong with that if, if a child or a young athlete wants to do only football and it's his or her passion, then I, I'm rooting for that, that go for it. But also, I think that the uh, children, some, many times they don't, like I, 
like I answered him that they don't understand the longitudinal process that as a coach you should try to explain the children that this uh, variety of uh, training doing multiple things it develops your mo motor skills and it helps you th this and that way and that's the coach's role to explain it and and I, I think many times when you're doing multiple sports it's it's easier to get different motor action but uh, I can if you're a track coach and if you're very good at your job you can also acquire the multiple motor skills from the actual track and field sport only. Can I have some sound? We have some federations who have tried to develop a competition model which is covering both. Uh, event group oriented youth competition. So you are working with a thrower, but the thrower will do hurdle sprinting and a rotational and linear throw. The jumper will do horizontal and vertical jump, but also hurdle sprinting. So you have the multiple aspect, but also you know already this will be a thrower and not a marathon runner. And I think that we are still testing on it, so, but it's an interesting uh, idea to have event group related work, but don't forget the basics. Rhythmic hurdle sprinting for both. Uh, so this could be interesting. Can, can I add a bit? Just go, go ahead. Can, can I add a bit? Our sport, track and field, is a, a technical sport. We have to complete technical movement in our sport. Run, jump, throw. That's why we have to perform our young athletes as early as possible. But it starts from the rough model to the elite model or to the complete model. On another hand, when, do, when we do the technical model improvement, we ask them to do other sports. Playing sport, volleyball, basketball, football, and then we gain two things in the same time. Uh, I would like to uh, ask the coach about the system you have in your country. Uh, you have these results because of the system or because of coaches like you or some of us? Do you have a really system? Uh, very good question, Coach. It's both. It's both. Before we start system, before we start education system, Thailand not get the gold medals in the Asian game for 24 years. 24 years. How many Asian games? And we start the project in 99. And then in 2000, in, nine, in 98, we get Silver. In 2002, we get gold medal and C game, Asian game record in 4 by one relay. They run 38.80. And we continue that. Until now, our athletic in the country is getting better situation than the last time because of the coaches system. Coaches all around the country, they, they can have more knowledge. They're not trained hard before we start the programs. We have a lot of athletes drop out from athletic. Only 16 and then disappear from the athletic. They stop because of the stucker and the injury behind. So I do believe in the education system for the coaches. If a coach have better knowledge, they can train the athlete better. Hello. Hello. Uh, we have right now two situations in the world. Uh, the IWF eliminate the under 18 championships, but the Olympic Committee have the Youth Olympic Games. And right now in Argentina, the athlete will compete in only one event, is specialization. What do, what do you think about this situation? Can I, can I answer on that? We had a meeting with the friends 
who are responsible for the events in Youth Olympic Games. It was too late to change anything for Buenos Aires, but be assured that the events will be, let's say, modified. So you are on the right track, one event and then Youth Olympics to be the medalist is identified and the good news is that our colleagues who are in charge are waiting actually for us to provide a different model. Olympic, uh, Youth Olympic Games, for my idea, is just the participate games, it's not the championship game. If you understand the idea how to train, and then you just go there, qualify for the part participate. But our country is not think like that, correct? Oh, you cannot win. Oh, you cannot qualify. But come back to our knowledge. Under 17 is still in the development phase. I think you will help me and agree with me to give a clap to our two colleagues. I would like to use this opportunity, also your help, to thank the people who have made this conference happening and being successful. Let's, I will name them, I will name them. We have behind you, in the cages there, we have Gabriele and her team who are doing the hard job to translate what we are telling, not translate, they interpret it, sorry, sorry Gabriele, they interpret what we are doing and try to make sense out of it, so maybe the interpretation is better than what we are doing here. Give them a big applause, please. Our development department is almost completely here, and this is also the result of the work of our colleagues. You have noticed Stefane. <laughs> then we have Vicky. <laughs> Tanya. <laughs> and in the background, not Paul Okello, not Paul. Beside Paul, we have Harald. Harald is our director. Give them a big applause. You have given us your emails, so be assured that we will contact you, follow up, we will provide you the link to the YouTube. All of this was registered, so you can see this again. But don't also be surprised when there will be a survey to ask you what do you think? What we can do better next time? Okay, I know you will say change the moderator, but beside that, <laughs> can we change topics? What did you like? What did you dislike? Because we want to improve further. We consider this, and thanks to your participation, the best conference for under 20 we have ever done. And this is not only in quantity. We never had that participation, I'm correct. And quality-wise, you speak for yourself. Thank you very much. Thank you. Adrian.